Everyone, Simon here. I am here with none other than Nadia Lakaeva, and today we're going to talk about the astrology of voice. That is, do you have the combos to make it on American Idol or to have a singing career? Now, how do we come up with this? Um, just by accident, we're watching someone sing, and Nadia, was it you who who asked or someone asked, hey? What indicates having a big voice in a horoscope? I probably did. I do that all the time. And we thought, well, Mar well, we thought there has to be this combo, which we're going to share with you in a second. And then we looked at some charts, and I just started opening charts. And it turns out this person has it, this person has it, everybody has this combo. And even if you don't, there's a saving grace. So what is that combo? Uh, we're going to check into that right now. But first of all, welcome, Nadia. Thanks for uh, doing Thank another podcast with me. What have, what have you had been to up to twist to my arm to be on camera because I don't enjoy that. But he said there's no YouTube video without the camera. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I go from my own my own experience of what, what I like to see. So if someone is doing a YouTube video and they're just sharing information, which is what I've done most of my, you know, you stuff on YouTube, I'll just throw something on screen. It's not as compelling as when you actually see the person talking, because you can see their eyes, you can see their gestures and Jyotisha is done through face to face, chest to chest is as heart. Uh, my teacher used to say, this is how it is taught. This is how it is practiced. And, um, you know, the best alternative, instead of being face to face, chest to chest is being so on zoom. So the eyes are the windows of the soul and the eyes do transmit. And so when I watch any YouTube stuff, whether I'm watching chess on on YouTube, which is very popular now, or or anything else, I like to see that person doing the explanation. And I think it goes both ways. So thank you for obliging us. Um, so what have you you been up to before we launch into this? Um, what have you been up to and what have you been teaching? I am teaching a course now over half a year long. It did not plan. I did not plan it to be this way. Um, but it just unfolded to be this way. I wanted to go through all of the major topics um, pretty fast. But I have this incredible... Um, need to perfect everything and to go very deeply into things those of you who have your lagnesia or your ascendant lord in the eighth house will know this deep need to drill a very deep well into something instead of you know go having shallow wells so my attempt to drill shallow shallow wells for each of the topics completely failed and instead of being a couple months long, it's now approaching seven months long course on all of the major topics in the um, intermediate Jyotisha. Which and, are, right, for example? Well, we started with the yogas, but the yogas are, in my opinion, overcomplicated in Vedic astrology. And they are the most important topic because the yogas are... Mm, the first thing that you have to consider, especially for timing and the potential of the person to uh, blossom in this lifetime. Uh, so I try to make it as simple as, as possible, basically, so that you just go systematically through each of them. And that's what we started with. And then we went through every single possible combo of all the planets, which is kind of the extension of the yogas too. So like, you know, um, moon, Mars, when they're conjunct, when we're in, in a mutual aspect, what does that mean for a person, you know, on every single level, physical, emotional, mental, etc. What kind of patterns it brings to the person and then we so we literally went through every single one and then i broke it up in three parts the first one was all the visible planets they're interacting with each other and then we went into outer planets so uranus neptune pluto with each one of the inner planets that are visible and 
then we went into Rahu with all the other planets. And Rahu Ketu was in its own a very deep topic that we went way longer than anticipated, but it was basically about a meaning of life and how to overcome suffering. And we started with a very kind of tangible, how do you identify it in the chart? And then we went into very philosophical and it was it was beautiful. And after that, we did sexual trauma, uh, which um, I have never seen anyone do. So if you're interested in that, please check it out. And uh, now we're on nakshatras, which I wanted to cover in just a few classes, but by trying to do it, I basically ended up dedicating every single class to just one nakshatra. So now we have at least a, um, an hour and a half dedicated to just one nakshatra, and we are we just covered the rohini. So we still have a long ways to go. Was see, I can't even answer a question in so a short talk way. Talk about digging a deep hole, right? You, you just, yes, you're, I just did. Amazing. So that's a lot of value bang for your buck. And um, for people yep. who are taking your class, go to ardramoon.com. You can check out her classes. I want to pull that up for people a little bit later once we get into this. Um, and you you made a good point about yoga. So today we're going to talk about com combos for singing, right? For voice. You may have combos for voice, but if you don't have powerful yogas for success then you may have a great voice that only your husband or wife or your neighbors will be able to get to hear in your lifetime. Whereas people who may even not have a very powerful voice but have strong yogas for fame, success, and the performing arts become pop stars, right? So there are multiple variations of that. So today we're not going to talk about yogas for success. You, um, I think... Uh, have we done a video on the very unique and powerful charts of, um, well, not Dua Lipa? Only Dua Lipa and Taylor Swift and, and people like that? Did we end up doing it or did we just talk about doing it? I can't we remember, about honestly. Doing it. I don't know if we actually did. I have to check. Um, I, did, I can't remember. The, I've been teaching nonstop, so I can't remember what it actually is out of my head and what is still in my head. I don't think we've done it. Um, it Maybe somebody, can, if you could leave a comment, let us know if that's something you want to see. Um, it is fascinating yeah. because no one gets to where they are by accident. It truly is. Well, in, in the last class on the yogas, I actually did that because you and I by accident discovered her, not discovered her chart, but looked at her chart and we just looked at just from the bird's eye view perspective, how many yogas she has, and she has so many. And so that was my exercise on the last class. I went through all the dozens and dozens of yogas and um, looked at her chart from that perspective and saw how many she had and which ones she didn't have to kind of uh, drill it into the people's heads. Yeah, but she, <laughs> what a chart, well. What a chart and charts like that are earned, you know, no, nothing is free in, in these lives. These nothing lives. is by coincidence. Yeah. So, so let's get to, let's talk about this now, by the way, this isn't a definitive pro forma or anything you're going to see in, in any textbook. Uh, this is something that we found that we came up with a hypothesis. Okay. If you're going to have a, a strong singing voice, this is probably going to have to appear. Then we tested that hypothesis with the charts of people who are, anyone would agree, powerful singers and are famous for it. That's and iconic, they, iconic and singers. Iconic for being the voice. In fact, we're going to start house. with one of my favorite, the voice, Tom Jones. He is the cause of the show called The Voice because he is the voice. That is his name. That is his appellation, right? So um, we can start with him. By the way, I didn't know his chart before we postulated this theory. Um, but we might as well start with him and then talk about Christina Aguilera and whoever, all the modern pop stars. So, Nadia, do you want to share the... You have to give me permission. The theory and uh, then share the chart. Let me yeah. give you permission. So let's get on with it. Uh Multiple participants can share. Okay, you should be able to share now. Okay. So 
when Nadia asked me, so what is it in a chart that has that a person should have a strong voice? My first thought was Mars has to aspect or occupy the second house, the, the house of the throat and the voice. Mars is energy. So if you've watched my, um, my series, Decoding Your Life Map with Vading Astrology, you've seen that where the sun goes, there is your soul purpose. Where Venus goes, that's what's beautiful in your life. Where Mars goes, that's where energy comes through. And when you have Mars aspecting or sitting in the second house, there should be power and energy in your voice. Now, Nadia, can you do both north and south? I'm energy? trying because I have so many charts pulled up. And because we're zooming, my uh, computer is being very slow. There it is. I see it. And also, right now, in the sky, at the moment of this recording, Mercury is retrograde. It just came out of combustion. It is exactly conjunct Rahu. And also, it is debilitated, just for the fun of it. So I've been having an insane amount of electronic problems and delays. Um, so this is normal right now. So please be patient. Om Buddhayanama. So this is um, both Indian, uh, North Indian and South Indian. Oh, but this is not, uh, he was not born in Pomona, California. No, he was born really? in, uh, this is not the correct chart. So oh. let's, let's skip Tom Jones and let's go to, it's okay. Let's, okay. Uh, um well, let's go to someone else all right um well that's also normal for um so just to time. illustrate the point just mercury to illustrate combust the point. yeah with rahu now just by itself mercury retrograde don't don't go off running into the woods oh mercury i think it's retrograde. not combust anymore it just came out of combustion but and debilitated. it's debilitated so yeah. debilitated maybe. retrograde conjunct rahu all right, well, let's start with, uh, let's skip the voice, Tom Jones, um, because it, it may be that he does not, may end up that he doesn't have it. And in fact, not everyone who has a powerful voice has to have Mars aspecting their second house there, but let, let's get there. Okay, let's get there. So who do we have here? Add Ellie, <laughs> add Ellie. Who is that a person? Is that a robot okay <laughs> simon's always funny simon always makes me laugh um okay so <laughs> this is the chart of adele a british singer who when mm, she sings French. sounds like an american black woman powerhouse of a of a voice um in and then she stops singing and then she talks like a proper british person that's fascinating anyway but here is an exalted Mars. Sorry, we use the North Indian, but you can extrapolate the same thing um, with the South Indian. So it aspects the second house. So the first criteria is met. So the first criteria was, does Mars aspect the second house? Or the second Lord. So what we're working with for the formula is first component is second house, or second lord and we are identifying whether mars aspects it or is conjunct which is the same thing okay okay and in this case the criteria is met okay and, but what else did you find that now becomes a, su a supportive factor we well we have two more things that um at least two more things that we have found which is jupiter also jupiter same thing aspects or is conjunct either the second house or the second lord so in in her instance it's the second lord that receives jupiter's ninth aspect the trinal aspect of jupiter is that what you meant when you asked yes, the question? Yes, yes. Okay, good. And the third component of the formula is the second house or the second lord has to be aspected or conjunct. 
Saturn. And what not doesn't have to be okay. So, but if it does, that gives that raspiness and raspiness and control of the voice. Because as a singer, you might have a very powerful voice, but if you have no control, then you're singing wrong notes very loudly. And nobody wants to hear that, right? Or listen to that. Well, you're and that so person at a at a a soccer game a cricket game or a basketball game who just when they yell everybody can hear you <laughs> right there are people with who have those voices and I'm yes like, mars in the second mars aspect exactly well you know in her chart also she is ardra rising if this is her correct time of birth oh, and as you might know ardra is ruled by rudra and rudra is called the howler so oftentimes people who have Ardra prominent will have the capacity to be very loud, sometimes too loud, like a loud storm that comes over and, and it just like a hurricane. Everything is loud and rattling and screaming. They can be prone to screaming, etc. Now, this is in stark contrast to a Vedic, uh, traditional Vedic astrology uh theory or theorem that says if there is a mute sign in the second house and it's aspected by, by malefics, the person will have speech problems. And typically the person will not speak up. And that is actually what we have here. We have cancer. Now, what are the mute signs? They are the water signs, cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. So we have cancer aspected by a malefic mars in fact the most malefic planet for this lagna he's enemy he's neutral yeah. to the lagna lord but he he rules bad houses so we have this in full and yet we do not have someone who's mute although she may suffer from periods where she will lose her voice or or everything plays out yeah but in fact she has a very big voice doesn't she she has a very big voice. Yeah, and she's not afraid of speaking up. That is kind of her thing. Even her lyrics, it's someone who is very honest about what happened in a relationship and they want to have the clarity and they're not afraid of, you know, calling out the other person on something or calling out themselves on something. That's kind of the theme in her lyrics because she's also the songwriter, not only um, a singer performer so let's let's summarize then then this theorem it is mars should be configured with the second house or second lord either by occupation or aspect number one number two when jupiter is added to that it amplifies its effects jupiter adds that buttery wholeness that sweetness that it just opulence rests opulence the wealth yes it, it just adds to it and then mm -hmm. saturn adds control or and sometimes rasp or that little dark and she edge. does she does have a little raspiness and she does have a lot of control she also has a lot of range and i wonder if the range comes from jupiter because of that capacity to expand well let's take a look at another big singer and let's see what uh what the chart says um, can I introduce another concept that I just discovered sure. um, a, a few days ago, which seems interesting to me, and it's not necessarily part of this pro forma, but it's it stands out so much. We'll see in a few charts that um, it's interesting to research. And that a combination is Neptune and Venus. You will see that in almost every one of these charts I'm going to show that I have pulled up that combination is present either by conjunction by opposition or a tight sextile which is within three degrees three and a half max uh, a tight trine or a tight square okay so you that's so in opposition it can be basically any orb within that sign same with conjunction so if Neptune and Venus are in the same sign or in opposite signs, that is an additional thing. And in fact, we'll see this in some charts who don't even have the Mars thing going on, but they have this. Yeah, um, I think one of those was Bono. 
I think. Because I don't think he's famous for a very powerful voice. He just has a nice voice. Um, so one second, let me see. I'm getting the wheel of death here. Oh, geez. That's um, very inconvenient. Sorry about that. Let's just stick with what you have instead of changing things up. Just stick with the North Indian and we can, because it's a very simple principle. I think anyone can identify it, even if you don't work with it. Okay. So that your computer doesn't crash. All right. I see you've got a lot of charts up. So here's Bono. And what do we have? Here's Bono. And we don't have Mars aspect. So the second house is here, right? It's always here. You can see the little uh, cheat sheet here. <laughs> and because it's Capricorn in the second house, the 10th sign of the Zodiac, Saturn is the ruler. Mars does not aspect Saturn, nor, of course, does it aspect the second house. There's no aspect from Mars. Um, Saturn also does not aspect the second house. We could take it as a half point if Saturn rules the second house, but that's not really enough. Jupiter is conjunct the second Lord Saturn. So that we have one and a half points from the performer. So one and a half out of three, you could say. Um, but we do have an exact opposition of Venus and Neptune. Look at how tight they are. Just within a few minutes, 14 degrees both. Okay. So let's save this as a, as a second technique, potential. And, and also keep in mind that Bono is not known for being a big singer, even though he, ha he has very high range. I mean, he has a voice, an amazing yeah. voice that goes yes. very high. Um, and yet it's not known necessarily for that power of like Adele. Yes, I think he does have a good range, though. Maybe that's what Jupiter gives him. That's what Jupiter gives, yeah. And, and then the, the third... Yeah. And the, yes, exactly. And the third thing that I would also consider, which uh, could be a substitute for the power of Mars or the opulence of Jupiter, uh, is Rahu. Rahu, uh, either in the second house or with the second lord, can also be a great contributor to the person, you know, just... Being able to express themselves, there's that need to express, basically. But, okay, you're bringing up Rahu, but how is it activating the second house here? Explain Second that. Lord. The performer is second house or second Lord. So you're taking Rahu's fifth aspect. Yes, the trinal aspects of Rahu. And they're, it's very tight here. Okay. All right, let's get back to our performa. So we're kind of wandered off a little bit. So let's find another chart. Let's see, who else do you have here? Um, Christina Aguilera here. Okay, let's see what Christina's chart looks like. Bono born in D Dublin. Okay. So we have automatically Jupiter and Saturn aspecting onto the second house. Wow. Because they're in opposition. And the Mars aspects with its fourth aspect. Amazing. Here's another case of a mute sign in the second house aspected by two malefics. And yet the person has is known internationally as having one of the most, you know, powerful, versatile singing voices. She has an amazing versatility. Yeah, she can... If you've ever watched her impersonate others, other singers on uh, Jimmy Fallon, you can just look it up on YouTube. It's fascinating. She's one of those chameleons. There's that Rahu also, just adding to the thing. And Neptune, Venus, she's got it all. Wow. So this chart has it all. And um, so there's Mars aspecting the second, Saturn aspecting the second, and Jupiter aspecting the second. And the second Lord is with Saturn as well so yeah full performa in play and venus uranus i mean venus neptune are what they're con they're in the same sign and of course if they're in the same sign we don't take orb uh we use yeah. vedic or opposition yeah whole sign beautiful okay who else um we have whitney houston 
Wow. Well, if we're talking iconic, probably the most famous big voice, uh, big voice in, in the women's category, at least. But I think for any category, she is. Jupiter, Saturn, Mars. Mar and they all also hit the second Lord because Jupiter Correct. is the second Lord. Another so, mute sign with two malefics. I think we're getting a pattern here. You know, yep. I. but nothing in Vedic astrology gets canceled out. So I think in some of these people, you may see drug use. You may see problems with with the voice or the throat or the mouth or language or what goes into the mouth those malefics do play out but they certainly have had an inverse relationship instead of muting them they've created amazing voice this is and if you look at jupiter by the way in this chart i just happen to know this jupiter is at zero 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 of angular motion mm -hmm. go all the way to the right there meaning it is absolutely still in the sky it is Station. a stationary planet and a stationary planet is extremely bright and blah 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 so wow jupiter saturn mars whitney houston christina aguilera adele <laughs> so far so good our theory is 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 playing out um i want to point out the exact square of uh, venus neptune as well within Just... that three degree orb yeah a square can be wider a square in a trine you can take take up to 10 degrees but here they're tight okay With the tighter the, the more intense the connection obviously a uh, sextile is a very weak so uh, aspect so it has to be super tight just a few degrees now if somebody who is a traditional vedic astrology purist says what is this sextile business what we're talking about is tajika aspect so that is a 311 aspect okay yes and even within the tajika system there is a deep tamsha there is a an orb so yes what nadia is talking about is that we're that's what we're using all right, let's keep going. Mariah Carey, super famous for that huge voice and also enormous range that only dogs can hear that high note. If you want to call, you know, your dog from the park, you just play Mariah Carey hitting that Oops. note and he comes, guaranteed. So what do we have here? Yes, we have a Jupiter aspecting the second house, Mars aspecting the second house, and Venus being the second lord is conjunct Saturn. So we have all of the three components in play. So Mars play. aspects the second, Jupiter aspects the second, and the second lord is with Saturn. Beautiful. Yep. We've got it all here. So and then do we have this Venus is a... Neptune here? No, we don't. We do not have okay. um, Neptune Mars, but that's a different story. Neptune Mars is fascinating. Oh, Neptune come Mars on, computer. Is for another video. That is a fascinating video. Yes. We should do that. Um, see a time unknown. So we can't really. Um, uh, <laughs> anyway. We can only speculate. Okay. So Nadia thinks, we can only thinks this is her chart, but we can't prove it. It's, so. if, let's not go there. Um, okay. It's just because I can't see. Uh, that it's you know it's cut off i have too many charts pulled up this is bjork bjork um she has a weird voice not a big voice she has a weird voice and um yeah she doesn't have the combo she doesn't have she does hitting the well she she has two and a half out of three so jupiter aspects the second lord mars saturn aspects the second house and mars is the ruler of the second house which is not really enough but it's just no, you know educational no. i i would want mars to be involved in, well I, and I she doesn't what... have the power so no. this is a really good example of the person has the range and the control but not enough power mars is not really aspecting okay. right 
Okay. Let's let's see some other big voices. Who do we have? Um. What about what is it? Beyonce. Beyonce. Okay. Beyonce. It's um having a hard time here. Okay. So right off the bat, we have Mars aspecting the second house. Boom. And the second Lord is Venus. And Venus is conjunct both Saturn and Jupiter. Okay. So most of the things are in play. We have Mars directly aspecting. And Saturn and Jupiter don't directly aspect the second, but they're with the second Lord. So mm -hmm. criteria. And interestingly, here is a sextile right here. Neptune, 60 degrees away from Venus. And within tight orb. Oh, and she's known for being a very beautiful and Venus is right on her ascendant. Oh, who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> and Virgo rising with the Lagnesh exalted in the Lagna. Well, who would have thought? Wow. Uh, yes. By the way, she the, Virgo is considered the most beautiful of the Rashis, of the signs in Vedic astrology. Now, what's interesting is that with the 24 degree um, difference between the tropical and the sidereal, most Virgo ascendants Vedic would fall into Libra, and Libra is considered one of the most attractive in Western astrology. So there's probably some correlation there. But the sign Virgo, Kanya, means a young girl, a, a virgin girl, a, a unmarried girl. And hence, you know, youth and beauty are, are correlated. So that is a, so just being Virgo ascendant predisposes you kind of off the bat with having those qualities. And of course, if you have Venus conjunct the ascendant and all that, that's not bad either. All right. The queen of soul. What? Look at this. So explain what you're showing here for people who use this only the South Indian. Can you pull uh, or... up both? Aretha is worth it. Let's see if, if you're... Okay. I hope it doesn't crash. But... So I'll narrate here while it's transitioning. We have... Mars in the eighth, aspecting the second, Jupiter Oops. in the eighth, aspecting the second, and Saturn in the eighth, aspecting the second. Yes. Ah, you know what's coming to me with the, and she's another one with a mute sign in the second house aspected by malefics. So I think one way that might play out is eating problems. It could be drugs. It could be uh sometimes could be having a foul mouth like cussing a lot um but mute yep. signs typically um, you know keep their lips closed they're they're mute so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't know i'm formulating something but okay go ahead nadia give us the tour here Oh, that's it. And also the second Lord is involved as well because Mars is also so here she participating. Has it in full. Adele has full, it full. in full. Uh, yeah. Christina Aguilera has it in full. Who else had it in full? Um, Whitney Houston has it in full. Mariah almost, not, not quite, right? Most of it. Yep. So this seems to be playing out. So far, so good. Amazing. Mm. Who else do we have up here? Now we have some people that don't have it, right? Yes. So I want to pull them up to in a second. Here is Mick Jagger. Um, we have none of the planets hit his second house, but all of the planets hit his second Lord, Mercury interesting which is in the third house of self-expression 
And so with Rahu also and Pluto, like power, and I have and, to express myself. And, and those of you guys has... who have, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, those of you who have taken mine or Nadia's class on the planetary combos, he has the rooster, the Rahu sun combo. On top of it, it's aspected by Mars that, and on top of it, it's in the third house of self expression. So this person can't stop expressing moving fidgeting right so and even and the he's... third lord is in the lagna uh, so identifying yourself with the lord of self-expression and it's with uranus which can add not it's with uranus and uranus is on the lagna which can add to the fidgetingness and and restlessness and wanting to move and wanting to change and, and like all of those kinds of things so not a powerful voice, not a big, like a singer's voice, but a voice that is very recognizable. So again, the fact that it doesn't meet the criteria tells you something. Okay, there's this is not a class. This is not a, you know, uh, uh, Aretha Franklin. This is not a Whitney Houston. And yet it is someone who will have an expressive communicative voice. Very mm -hmm. interesting. Um, Mandy Moore has it. She has a beautiful voice, lots of control. Um, the second Lord is Mercury. So Saturn aspects, the second Lord, Jupiter aspects, the second house and Mars aspects, the second house. So in full. Yes. She in has full. a big, beautiful Disney princess kind of voice. Yes. And uh, this interesting combination again is showing up here in exact square interesting to me anyway all right so those a lot of you may not know who mandy moore is but she is an actor actress who is uh played in a lot of films and and, and she is sung for disney movies i believe or those kinds of movies all right who else um let's see who that is but stevie nicks one of the Stevie's, Stevie Nicks. Uh, let's see. She has, she's got it all again. Look at that. Um, she has Jupiter and Saturn aspect, the second house. But not Mars. So she doesn't have the power. She doesn't have the power. Oh, interesting. So in my mind, yes. So, but Jupiter also aspects the second Lord. And Mars is the ruler of the second house. So it's like a, a third of a point. But she yeah. is no Aretha Franklin. She is no Christina Aguilera. Not even close. So true. the power is not there. But the yes. raspiness, the she is a world famous singer. She has a beautiful voice. I'm not saying she doesn't. I'm saying she's not that powerhouse kind of singer. That's not her style. Mm-hmm. Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Oh, very nice. So here it is in part. You have the combo in part. Saturn and Jupiter and Rahu in this case are there. But you don't have that Mars giving the... Mm. Okay. Um, Stevie Wonder has it in full. No Mars aspect on the second lord there yeah. is well and again though he's not known as a big voice he has a very recognizable voice very high voice but not a power singer but yes so he has saturn hitting his second control jupiter hitting his second range but no mars but yeah and the need the to, to use that voice, Rahu, that needs to, to be heard, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Now, uh, let's go over some examples where this we have powerful singers, but this is not in place. Because if you don't have Mars aspect in your second, don't jump off a cliff yet. Please, don't just don't jump off a cliff at all, because there are other ways you can have a big voice. 
So what do we have here? Elvis Presley, Mars hitting the second house. Beautiful. And uh, and that's really the only thing we have. Okay. Saturn is not at play at all. If we can count a little bit of the fact that Jupiter owns the second house, but that's not enough, you know. Uh, Saturn doesn't hit the second house or the second lord. Mars does. So that's the only thing we have here. Okay. So see, even if you only have one of them, you could be the next Elvis. You yeah. don't need, and as we've seen with Stevie Nicks and a few others, even if you don't have Mars, if you'd have other grahas aspect, aspecting the second and you have the yogas for success, you can be known for being a good and worthy singer. It's just that Mars gives that power. He does have a chart of a perfect performer and someone who could use his voice and face to become famous. Um, we have the 10th Lord in the second house of the voice, 10th Lord of career in the second house of the voice, and the third Lord of creative arts and performance and self-expression aspect in the 10th house, and uh, Saturn Moon Angular, Rahu Venus in the third. Perfect chart for entertainer, um, actor, singer, musician, anyone like that. And of course, this doesn't tell us the level of success. It just tells us that they can do it as, as a profession. That's what Nadia is going through. House Bhava Vichara, house analysis gives us what you can do. Yoga Vichara. The static tells potential. Us, yes. Yes. But Yoga Vichara gives us also the static potential of success. Like how big right. can you be? And that Saturn moon is huge. That shush, it's a Shasha yoga from two lagnas and etc. We won't get into that. It's also a powerful uh, uh, Raja yes. yoga um, as well. So, um, and, and there's other stuff. The the Sun Mercury in a second is very clean. It's extremely clean, um, even though it's in Sambanda with Mars. But yes, but back to our performa, only Mars. Um, and yet with his combos and for success and that Venus Rahu in the third, the third house, the need to express. And guess what? When he, when Elvis came out, I don't know if you guys remember or no, I don't remember. I just know it because I've seen it in the fifties. He wasn't known for his voice. He was known for something else. He was called, he wasn't called the voice. He was called Elvis, the pelvis because of his dance moves. Rahu Venus in the third. Third is the oh, house of dance. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. He, we don't know Elvis today, and he wouldn't have made it if it weren't for his revolutionary dance moves. Uh, wow. Beautiful. All right. Now we come into the classical genre of op operatic voices. So what do we have here? Well, we have basically only one of three. Interesting. So Mario Lanza, if you don't know who that is, had a very smooth, velvety voice, and he was a crooner, uh, but who could also do uh, opera. Um, hmm. But he, he was, his voice, I think maybe the one critique was that perhaps he wasn't the most powerful but mm. it was velvet, very smooth and, and beautiful, and he had tremendous range. Smooth also means control. Yeah. Yeah. So those of you who don't, again, who want to be big singers, look, this is Mario Lanza, big, big voice singer, doesn't have this combo. So um, again... He does remember, have Rahu in the second and aspecting the second Lord too. So that's again kind of an alternative check so if you don't have it and you want to be a singer check for rahu because mm. rahu is a chameleon and can also even when you're doing um you know when you're evaluating the effects of rahu what do you look at first well which other planet will rahu give results of 
And it's the planet that usually aspects it, conjuncts it, and the one that disposits it. So it's it's very much a chameleon. It can take on the roles of other planets. And so we could use it as a backup singer. <laughs> Pun intended, <laughs> Rao is the backup singer for this pro forma. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're not amused. I'm sorry. I am amused. Um, I'm thinking that this birth time may also be suspect because we're looking at 10, 8, 10 p.m. Yeah. Who knows? It could be 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Was this double, uh, triple A, double A rated? Do you remember? Who knows? I don't. I don't remember. Okay. I could look it up, but my I don't want to mess so with let's, the computer. Let's yeah. Let's not pass judgment here, but we'll use this. Um. Let's keep going. Perhaps the biggest, do we have Caruso's birth time? Um, I'm not sure. There it is. Yes. So again, suspect time of birth. But that is from, oh, right. That is from uh, 3 a.m. was the time given mm -hmm. at, from Astro Data Bank. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, look at this. He meets the probably the most famous tenor of the last century. And unfortunately, they didn't even have microphones. He had to sing in a phonograph, like in a big tube, to for modern listeners to be able to hear his voice. But at in his time, he was the undoubted king of opera. And um, he conquered not just the uh, world of opera, but, you know, the popular song of uh, not just Italy and, and, and that milieu, also in the United States. He's world famous, Enrico Caruso. So there we have Mars aspecting the second, Saturn in the second. We don't have Jupiter, but we have Rahu, as Nadia is indicating. Rahu is very tight aspect onto the second lord. Um, the second cusp is at 1840, so not tight orb. What I'm looking at, I'm trying to find the connections and the patterns. Um, Saturn is in Uttarashadha, which is ruled by Sun, and Jupiter aspects Sun, the Sukshma dispositor of Saturn. It's a big of a stretch, but it's something. It's a bit of a stretch, but he did have tremendous range and control throughout the entire range. From the highest notes to the lowest, he could make that note do whatever he wanted it to do. It wasn't like, oh, I can hold the note. No, I can hold it and I can make it go like this or like this or like this or right. And then bring it wow. down and then bring it back up with ease, right? Mm. Without sweating or like, without... like you see some people straining to hit a note. No, no, no. It's like, here's the note. And by the way, I can bring it back and I can do this and I can that that level of mastery right wow that you see only in people who are you know icons the best truly course, like an instrument that they're playing they and they can do anything up and down the fretboard yeah. yeah and again you see that powerful third house i mean four planets hitting the third house of self-expression and the, yeah. whenever you have a combo, here's a little bonus tip for those of you guys who've been here so long. Not, Nadia, you know this very well, and you alluded to it in Mick Jagger's chart. When the third house yeah. is connected to the 10th house, yes. either the Lord of one goes to the other. That is one of the indicators for a career in performance, dance, self-expression somehow. Now, what type of I call it being in front of people. You can be in front of people, uh, giving speeches uh, in a, you know, in, in in a, what's it called? The board, the um, in the 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 corporate board, the the corporate, yeah, the the corporate leaderboard. No, the it's office. not the the office, basically, you know. So, but still performing on a regular basis in front of people, giving speeches, expressing oneself, gesticulating, showing something with the media, because Third House is also with the media, being on YouTube, whatever it might be. But, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, a performer 
certainly a performer and one who in this case uses his voice because the second house is probably the strongest house here um maybe the ninth is also the mm. best, but all right mm -hmm. so good so mr caruso has it what about his counterpart uh in the late 20th century Havarati. yes um do i, I believe that's how you pronounce it? it's it's pronounced this is the correct pronunciation is Pavarotti. i don't luciano i didn't pull him up but here's a uh, neptune venus exactly conjunct i wanted to point that out this is an oh, interesting wow. thing i just keep seeing it over and over in them um Let's Neptune see. Venus gives an ability in the uh, dramatic arts. So Neptune is deception, off, I do not self deception, and most drama begins with uh, or is founded on some kind of deception, um, and uh, someone doing someone else wrong. But uh, which we can get into when we talk about Neptune Mars. Um, but that is the foundation of good art. There is a disappointment or a deception. And Venus Neptune, remember Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. So Venus is worldly beauty. Neptune is angelic beauty. And when, when those two... Otherworldly beauty. Otherworldly beauty. And when those two combine, it means the person in whom they combine can access that otherworldly beauty. And if they have the skills as indicated by their chart, they can express it in this worldly terms. Make sense? Yes, beautiful. Now, sometimes if a person doesn't have the skills, they may have Venus, Neptune, but they may be a computer programmer or a UPS delivery person. It doesn't matter. Then they appreciate beauty. When they listen to music, they hear things other people They seek can. it out, basically. They seek they, it out. They seek it out. So they may not have the chart to be performers or whatever, but their Venus Neptune still connects to that otherworldly beauty and recognizes it. Game knows game. <laughs> okay. Yes, game definitely does no game. Okay, I think that's a good point to stop. Okay, so you guys got it. I think that's plenty of charts. And here we have the chart of Little Richard, who in a way started a, a different conversation for me, which is, um, he's a fascinating character. Why did he renounce his sexuality? Who, born and most obviously a gay man, uh, if you've ever seen Little Richard and, and heard him and talk about his personal life, and yet he renounced his gayness, his homosexuality, for uh, in the name of his Christian faith. And so that is a fascinating example for, for the rest of his life, by the way. He didn't just renounce it. He renounced it early in his career in the 50s, 60s, but then he kind of came back. And then at a certain point, he said, that's it. And the rest of his life, I believe, as far as I, I know. So that is a combo called Mars-Neptune. And we will talk about that in another video. So... I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, Nadia, can you please share the screen and share where people can go to take your class? Um, we'll do a, a... Yes, I will do that. Um, here I have uh, just whatever I drew up, like a crazy scientist here, is we have the second Lord Venus is aspected by Saturn. It is not aspected by Mars. It is not aspected by Jupiter, but it is aspected by Rahu. And it is exactly sextile um neptune just within half a degree about a half a degree another interesting thing what you were talking about is which we'll try to do in the next video i guess like you said is the lagnatia or the ascendant lord mars here is conjunct the three possible planets that have to do with self-annihilation which really what moksha is moksha means liberation or letting go 
And because it's the planet of the self, the Ascendant Lord, we have Neptune, the planet of transcendence, Ketu, the planet of Moksha, and Jupiter here is the Lord of the Twelfth House, which functions a lot like Ketu and Neptune. So he has three out of three here. Wow. So like, wow. Yeah, And, and it's so in, in what nakshatra? The nakshatra PP. of sexuality. PP. Um, is the nakshatra of the PP. Exactly. Of the PP. <laughs> it's the PP. P dot P of the PP. The lingam. Um, <laughs> yeah. And the lingam is the symbol. So. Um, okay. Oh, yes. So I will. So this is my site. He spent the and rest the... of his life singing in church not not for fame or yeah so, singing in where in churches in church yeah like gospel kind of thing but well that's beautiful that's very neptune k2 and 12th house that's perfect 12th lord also aspecting his k2 neptune jupiter also aspecting his ascendant at the same time as his conjunct ascendant lord this is a great combination for reaching higher levels of spirituality but also maybe at the cost of self-annihilation very much so that's well i think we just did the next class <laughs> yes. but, okay. no there's so much more to say about that all right so ardramoon.com Yes, ardramoon.com, and at the top you can hit classes. I'm the official sponsor of today's video. <laughs> yes. And, and for those uh, of you who, who don't like watching uh, this section of the videos, let me let me do something funny. Let me see, what can I do? I, I'll, play, <laughs> I'll play a song here while you're doing it, to, just to keep everyone involved. So go ahead, Nani, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> there's not much to say. It's pretty selfless explanatory. I guess the only thing that's worth mentioning is this is the course that I've been teaching for over half a year, taking off with Jyotisha, which is the interme intermediate level. And that's why it's more pricey, because it actually consists of all the following modules here. The yogas, the outer planets, the visible planets, um, the Rahu K2. Oh, the Dharma types, I didn't mention that, and how to identify it in the chart. And right now... We're going through the nakshatras. We have already covered the sexual trauma. So, yeah. Did you hear any of what I was playing? Not really. No, it's crazy. It doesn't pick it up. The mic doesn't pick it up. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, uh, so anyone interested in learning this and getting a bang for your buck and learning uh, and having the most beautiful uh, study tools, the visual tools that you give are out of this world. I know Nadia spends days creating one sheet. Well, you get to see it live. Nobody else gets to in the world. But um, yes, it's um, lots of sacrifice has been made for the purpose of the delivery materials for each Adios. of the classes. But so I hope you guys hope. enjoy and do uh, do check out her uh, her growing list of classes and there'll be more soon. So uh, otherwise, we'll see you here on YouTube. Thank you. Any last words, Nadia? Thank you. How do you go sing something? Let me see. <laughs> Let me see if the mic will pick it up. I don't know. Let's see if you can hear this. Nope. No? Uh, a tiny, tiny bit, yeah. Not really. It's very subtle. Okay, well then. It is not my destiny either to be a performer in this life, so... That is not to, true. That is to. not true. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Hari Om. Hari Om.